title of the message uh, is Reformation. Now, Reformation means a change. God is calling for a change. You look at our world, it's filled with chaos mm -hmm. and darkness and, and uh, hatred and division. And a lot of those things have come into the uh, church. And uh, he wants change. God is uh, always causing, calling for change. And he wants change first uh, in his body. Uh, you know, judgment begins there. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because if he was judging the world right now, it'd mean condemnation and it'd be eternal mm -hmm. uh, damnation. But he's, he's wanting us to begin uh, the ball rolling and begin uh, reformation with us. Now, reformation is an action by, uh, in this case, believers. So this is by man. Uh, now, transformation is something that God does, the actions of God. And so when we yield ourselves to him, he's going to transform us into the image of God. But we have to make some decisions about reformation that we want change. Now, when we want change and when we're looking for change and moving in that direction, the Holy Spirit is going to be prompting us to move in that direction and he's going to be empowering us uh, to bring change. And so the world is not going to change by the political system. It's not going to be changed by the educational system, not for, not in a positive sense. What it's going to be changed by are people like you and me. That's where the Reformation uh, is. And of course, we've got a, a long history over the ages of reformers, uh, such as Martin Luther and John Calvin. And, and uh, they found out that when um, the church was building uh, off in the direction away from uh, what God wanted, that they brought it back, uh, brought it back to its original uh, design, the way that God intended it to be. So that's a reformer, and that's the way uh, we should all look at ourselves as reformers, that uh, mm -hmm. we're not satisfied with uh, things as they are. We want changes, and we want to be a part of the changes that change this uh, your community that changed this nation, that changed the world. We need to be a part of that because God is calling for change. And uh, it, it's an exciting time. And a lot of people are looking to the political system for change, but the changes that are needed in the world are not going to come uh, from those sources. It's going to come from you and I, people like us, it's going to come mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so Amen. that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, or what is re uh, Reformation. And, of course, we can go back uh, through the ages and look at different ones. But let's think about the Bible. And uh, Hebrews uh, 9, uh, verse 10, uses this word. And it's the only time it's in the Bible is Reformation. And uh, if I look at the different translations, it means things like new order and uh, uh, the new way that God is doing things. It's talking about a restoration in our hearts. Uh, so mm -hmm. all of all of this is important that uh, God is calling for change. And we're just going to go back and look at a few uh, concepts, primarily in Matthew 11 and Matthew 12. But we want to start uh, at a verse that we all know very well, and that's uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse uh, 14. And if the world is in chaos, and if the world is in darkness, then God is going to look to his people uh, to make changes. Oh, hallelujah. And, and hallelujah. when there are plagues and pestilences, and they, haven't we experienced plagues and mm -hmm. pestilences? Then this is a verse that applies how things are going to be changed, who God is looking to. He's not looking to the world to change it. He's looking to you and to me to make changes, mm. to bring forth changes that are going to be impactful. So let's look at Second Chronicles, Chronicles 7, 14. 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Okay. Hallelujah. Do you want some changes in your country? If you want changes in your community, if you want changes in your neighborhood, where is it going to start? It's going to start when God's people 
who are called by his name will humble themselves mm -hmm. and uh, pray. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and so you think about the plagues that we have had, and, and that was the verse before it. If you, if you experience plagues, then it's God's people that need to stop the plagues. Oh, have we Hallelujah. experienced plagues? Hallelujah. Have we been involved in humbling ourselves and praying and seeking the face of God and repenting, turning from our wicked, wicked ways and uh, changing our mindset, changing our heart? That's what he's calling for. And, and the, really the focus of word here is repentance. Uh, that's what a change of heart is and change in the direction. We change away from evil when we... Mm change mm. towards God. So it's away from something and repentance is moving away from something and towards something and it's towards God. Mm. And, and so repentance, uh, when we think about repentance, we think about there's something that's going to bring forth repentance. And I've got a couple of verses here. I want Sherry to read uh, first from Second Corinthians, Corinthians 10. 7. Uh, yeah, Second yeah. Corinthians seventeen says, "For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death." Okay, so what we see here is a godly sorrow. It's going to take a godly sorrow, and what I have seen over my life, and particularly in uh, different. Uh, congregations is a lot of people are trained. They're trained to fall down when the pastor prays for them. They're trained to go down to the altar at the end of a service and everybody's invited to the altar and everybody goes down there and they weep and they cry, but they're not changed. See, the real change comes from godly sorrow. Oh, it's not because you're trained to go down and, and cry and mm -hmm. shed some tears. It's not that. It's godly sorrow. Now, another thing that produces it, and that is glory to yeah, God. Yeah, Romans 2, 4. The goodness of God. Oh, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Okay, so it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, the kindness of God, how good he is. Now, when do we see his goodness? Well, when he's moving among us. You, you know, not only is God good, but his spirit is good because Hallelujah. they are one. So when God sends his spirit to move among us, and, and there's really two points I'm making here to begin with, and we're going to see the uh, change. We're going to see reformation when uh, we're having repentance. And that's a, mm -hmm. from godly sorrow Amen. when we've experienced the goodness of God. And Mark chapter 10 uh, says that there's none good but God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark 10, 18. But Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except God alone. Okay. But also his spirit is good because uh, mm, you can't tell any difference in him. God is good. His spirit is good. So when his spirit is good, uh, his good spirit is moving, then that's the goodness of God. So when mm -hmm. we see the Holy Spirit moving um, in our midst, we're seeing the goodness of God. When we experience the goodness of God, when we're in the presence of God, see the world, uh, a lot of people in the world are hopeless. They have no peace. They have no joy. But when we're in the mm -hmm. presence of God, what do you find? You find hope. You find oh, hallelujah. Peace. hallelujah. You find joy. And so that's, if we're going to have a reformation, it's by the presence of God, by the very spirit of God, because he brings goodness. Now, Ephesians 2 says that we are to do good works. Amen. Well, but the only good thing is God, his spirit. And when his spirit moves through you, that's when you do good work. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there's a lot of natural things that uh, people call good. And they say, oh, that was a good job, or that was a good, uh, but I tell you, the Bible just talks about what the work mm -hmm, of God is mm -hmm. doing. That's the good work. Amen. Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. This is why we were created, for good works, which God performed beforehand so that we would walk in them. So they're already created, they're already released, but we 
the Lord wants us to walk in those works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it comes from godly sorrow and following in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's when things are going to be changed. Now, I just have a few uh, things I'm going to talk about tonight. And I want to talk about the cities that Jesus visited and, and there, in particular, there are three references to three cities I, I want to mention in this message today. And there's one at Capernaum where uh, Jesus did mighty works by the Spirit of mm. God. And we have to remember mm. everything he did was by the Spirit of God. And, and then there's also Sodom. He, he makes a reference in these two passages, uh, Matthew 11 and Matthew 12. He makes references to Sodom, which happened a long time before, and to Nineveh, which happened a long time before. So we want to see how these uh, fit together. And when we start with uh, uh, Matthew eleven twenty, 20, uh, I, I want you to see that it goes right back. Jesus talks about repentance. He, he really is uh, mm -hmm. hitting mm -hmm. the nail on the head here, repentance. Mm -hmm. Matthew eleven twenty. Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Oh, hallelujah. They saw the mighty move of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, and they didn't repent. They had a hard heart. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to change your heart. That's, about, that's what Reformation is about. It's about a change of heart, change of mindset. We've been going one way. Let's, mm -hmm. let's turn around and go another way. And then, uh, in, still in Matthew 11, Jesus makes a reference to Sodom. And this is one of the most incredible statements, I think, in the Bible. So just read this passage. Matthew 11, verses 23 and 24. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! So can you imagine that? Sodom, as, as evil as Sodom was, that they could have remained until today if somebody had gone there with the Holy Spirit, uh, letting the Holy Spirit move through them. Mm. And what I want you to see is that the cities mm, uh, mm. that are around you are just like Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. They're just like you. Let's, let's read in Ezekiel. There's this mm, interesting mm, passage mm. still about Sodom, uh, Ezekiel, and it tells what was wrong with Sodom. And, and uh, I want you to listen about this and see if the cities around you, maybe your own city, mm -hmm. has some of these same characteristics. What right. is it? This is Ezekiel 16, 49, and this is from the expanded uh, version of the Bible. This was the sin, the iniquity, the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were proud and had plenty of food and lived in great comfort or secure ease, but she did not help strengthen or put a hand out to the poor and to the needy. Ooh, Ooh, hallelujah. Need this a little bit. Hallelujah. What was Sodom's problem? They were, proud. they were proud. They had pride. Can you think about mm -hmm. your cities mm -hmm. and the cities mm -hmm. around you? It, they have pride. Or, or, second mm -hmm. was abundance. Mm -hmm. They had abundance. Oh, Ooh. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And they had, they were living at ease and they had comfort. They oh, had a wow. lot of comfort. Wow. And, and they were just wow. living at ease. And, and Oh, does that characterize some cities around you? Yours, maybe your city. And then finally, they would not help the poor, poor and, and the needy. needy. Mm, mm, mm. That's the that's the age we're living in. Right. That people are proud. Oh, hallelujah! They mm. did it all. They've accomplished it all. They've reached abundance. Mm. They've gotten it by their own hand. They're living a life of comfort and ease. And they, oh, not paying much attention to yeah, poor the and poor needy. and needy. Mm. But you know what's going to make a difference is compassion. You know, Ooh, Jesus hallelujah. was moved with compassion. Let's talk about compassion. You, you know, there there's so many people around, and they're in such need. 
but we need to be moved with compassion. We can't rely on our government uh, because the, they haven't made things better. Uh, and as far as the poor and the needy, I, I'm beginning to see more and more uh, people who are poor and needy. And, and so we're, we're not going to have to, we're not going to see solutions in the political arena that will I mean, do what yeah. God tells you and, and I, me to do. The body of Christ. He says to have compassion Amen. on the poor. And, and so Sodom, th this, was, this was a description of Sodom that a prophet spoke out. This was Sodom's problem. They were proud. They were, mm -hmm. they had abundance, they had comfort, they had ease, and they would not help the poor and needy. Would that apply to you and me? We cannot be like that or we're going to end up in the place we don't want to go. We need to be humble ourselves. See, that's what Second Chronicles yeah, that's what 7, says. 14 started with. Hum if humble my yourself. people will humble, humble themselves, themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked way. That means repent. That, and repent is real. It's, it's a heart issue. It's a felt at the heart issue. Mm -hmm. And Sodom would be here today if somebody had gone there with the Holy Spirit in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you might think, well, that, that was a long time ago and I couldn't do that. Well, what about your city? What about your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. What about your family? If you went there yeah. with the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, then there would be repentance. Amen. And there would be a change. See, God is calling for reformation. That means a change of heart, a change of mindset, a change of direction. And that will happen by the power, power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, why is it by the power of the Holy Spirit? Because it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance, and it's only by the work of the Holy Spirit that we're going to see goodness. Now, that's the way Jesus operated. We see that uh, in, in chapter 11, he was talking about the cities. Now, he's talking about the religious system in, Mac, in Matthew chapter 12. He, he's beginning to talk about the uh, religious system and there's this passage, I want to just tell you what happened. He went into a synagogue on the Sabbath, and there was a man there with a withered hand. I suspect he'd been there for quite a while, and he hadn't uh, received help. This is another instance where yeah. people haven't been concerned mm -hmm. about this man. Uh, they haven't been concerned about the poor and needy. I suspect he was in that category. He needed help, and, and they didn't. Uh, extend a hand to help him, but Jesus did. When he came there, he healed the hand of the man who had that withered hand. So he Hallelujah. healed and restored that hand so that it was whole like the other hand. Now, the, the religious leaders didn't like it because it was mm -hmm. their rules. Their, they mm -hmm. had a form of godliness yes. and they denied the, the power, power thereof. So they, there needed to be some reformation because they had a, a form that denied the power of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And they were, they got mad at Jesus and that, and they decided that they were going to destroy him. So they went, went together and they started talking about how to destroy him. Now what Jesus did, he left that area. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's don't talk bad about Jesus. Let's don't talk bad about the Holy Spirit. A and then, I'm going to let Sherry read these verses mm -hmm. and just find out what happened when all these multitudes, great multitudes, began to follow him. Mm. In Matthew 12, 14 through 18. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him uh, as to how they might destroy him. But Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him and he healed them all. Woo, there was. Hallelujah. Right there. Hallelujah. He healed them all. Now, how did he do that? By the power, power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And okay. warned them not to tell who he was. This happened so that 
what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. So this was a prophetic fulfillment. Yes. A fulfillment of what Isaiah had said. So what does it say? Would be fulfilled. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. Okay. How Hallelujah. Did, how did Jesus do that? By the spirit. See, mm. Isaiah saw it way back there. He said, my servant, I'm going to put my spirit put upon, upon my him. servant. Well, that's why that's you and me, the servant. See, there's a, the religious system uh, has, brings forth a, a social gospel that uh, it's about uh, motivational speaking. A lot of people hear the motivational speaker where it's uh, be good, do good, get more. But, but who's telling people mm. to be a servant? See, Isaiah saw a servant and Matthew saw a servant, mm -hmm. the fulfillment of that. So it's not just about receiving everything from me. Oh, I get this. I get that. No, this is what God's giving me. This is what God's giving me. But be a servant. See, Sodom, what was wrong with Sodom? They didn't care. They didn't reach out to the poor and, and needy. needy. But a servant, if you have a servant heart, see, you're going to, you're going to recognize where they're poor and needy. And you're going to reach out because a servant uh, that's what a servant does. They're, they're serving the needs of other people. Mm, hallelujah. Okay. I also want to just uh, uh, interject right here uh, when we're talking about the man with the withered hand. And this is another thing that, that the Lord is doing by his spirit uh, in this time, in real time. He is restoring the hand. He is restoring the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to the body of Christ. There has been those that have said there's no longer apostles and prophets. There's, and, and maybe they'll accept an evangelist or maybe they'll accept a pastor or a teacher. But the Lord is restoring. But that's part of reformation. That goes along with reformation and change is the restoration of who we are and what the Lord wants for his body. Bring forth all the gifts, Amen. all the gifts, Amen. ministry gifts, equipping gifts. We need all of them. We need all of them. Hallelujah. Now the thing about Jesus, see what it said here in, in uh, Matthew 12, it said to behold my servant, I put my spirit upon him. And, and a lot of people want to say, well, Jesus was the son of God and he did all of this thing. But, but Philippians uh, 2 verse 5 really puts things in order here. Mm, amen. Jesus came as the son of God, but he redefined himself as the son of, of man, man who could do nothing on his own. He had to do it by the spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. so read this, Philippians. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. He existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, listen to this, and, and Michelle Pritchett is with us tonight. She sings a song, I give myself away. Oh, hallelujah. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant, he became human. Oh, hallelujah. Whoa. He became a servant, became human. Yes. And I love that phrase. He emptied, emptied himself. himself. He was God. He was equal to God. He'd always been God uh, and he's always deity, but he humbled himself. He emptied himself and, and he took on the nature of man and he, and he could do what he did by the spirit, spirit of, of God, God operating on him. And, and so that's and through him and through him. So it, a lot of people can't relate to that. They don't see that. They, they say, well, he's the son of God and he can do all of that. And then uh, healing's not for today. And, and we don't need all of that stuff anymore. No, uh -huh. we need it. We're desperate. We're desperate for, for you, the Lord. Lord. Amen. We're desperate for you. Move in a mighty way. Move in a mighty way in this 
a Zoom, Zoom meeting, meeting right now. now. Hallelujah. We need you in a desperate way, a we desperate way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know, oh. we know that you emptied yourself, Lord Jesus, so that you could be like us, so that we can do what you did Amen. by the power Amen. of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Oh, that's hallelujah, so, hallelujah, so hallelujah. Okay. What's this next verse here? Thank you, Jesus. John 5, 19. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also can do in the same way. See? Hallelujah. Back in Philippians, it said he emptied himself. And now he's saying, I, I can't do anything of myself. Nothing, nothing. of myself. Do you, do you see yourself that way? I can do nothing, nothing of myself. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As, as I yield myself to the Holy Spirit, as I empty myself and be a vessel uh, that he can move through, then I'm going to look at people differently. I'm going to look, mm -hmm. oh, that person needs something by the Spirit. And I'll only know these things by the Spirit of God, but I'm Amen. operating Amen. by the Spirit of by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now the next thing here, read this next verse, which I Matthew 12, 28. I think is a wonderful verse. But if I cast out the demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. See what? Hallelujah. Jesus knew that what he did, he did by the Spirit of God. So when he healed the multitudes up there earlier in this chapter, he did it by the Spirit of God. When he cast out demons, he did it by the Spirit of God because that is the kingdom of God. The kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where the Holy Spirit is free to move, where there are signs and wonders occur, where miracles occur. That's that's the reason in local congregations they don't see these miracles. They don't see the signs and wonders. They may have it written in their charter that they believe in the Holy Spirit, but they don't make time for the Holy Spirit. They don't they quench the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. They grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit it needs to move in our midst. See, hallelujah, we can do. Hallelujah. We're like Jesus. We can do nothing of ourselves. If we if there's anything that needs to be done, it, it needs to be through us as a vessel of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit moving through mm -hmm. us. Amen. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah! Hallelujah. Okay, and that's next. Yeah, Matthew twelve forty one. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Hallelujah. 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 It goes back to repentance. This whole message started with repentance and we're, we're making a circle. We're coming back with repentance. I mean, that we're changing our lifestyle. We're changing our heart, a change of heart, a change of mind, mind that we change away from the world. And we focus on Jesus. We keep, we look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our, our faith. faith. And I said, we're going to talk about Nineveh. Nineveh repented. How were they able to avoid the situation that Sodom got into and Sodom was a uh, rain down a uh, fire and brimstone mm -hmm. on Sodom. Uh, but, but Nineveh, see God sent a prophet there, uh, Jonah and, and Jonah proclaimed the message that, that we need to repent, that we, that God uh, wants something better for us than what we're in. And so they repented. Not only did they repent, they got in sackcloth and they fasted and they made their animals uh, uh, fast. I, I don't know if the animals oh. <laughs> wanted to do that or not, but they fasted. The animals fasted. The people fasted. And, and there there have been plagues in our land. Have we been fasting mm -hmm. and praying and humbling ourselves and repenting and seeking the face of God? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God is calling for reformation. Yes. And you are a reformer. He's wanting to use you to reform things, to reform your family, to reform your life, 
changes. It's all about, it starts with you and it starts with me that we need reformation. God is calling for a reformation. He's calling for changes and the changes are only going to work by the Holy Spirit. We've got to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to repent from trying to do our own things and, and get involved with the man's programs uh, that are that are not effective, but be followers of the Holy Spirit, be Amen. vessels of the Holy Spirit wherever we go. This is this message is about the Holy Spirit bringing forth the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit move through our lives to reform us, first of all, transform us, but we've got to make a decision and we've got to have some action behind reformation. God is calling for reformation and it starts with people. Amen. It doesn't start Amen. with God. Reformation doesn't start with God. It starts with people. It starts with a Martin Luther who, who reads the Bible and he, he sees some things that are wrong and he, and, and he writes them down and he uh, nails them to the door. <laughs> At glory to God. It starts with a man and it Hallelujah starts with a, a woman. A, a woman and it starts with a boy and a girl. It starts with us. Hallelujah. It doesn't start uh, out there with institutions. It starts with people who have been touched by the Spirit of God and they're willing to yield themselves as a broken vessel uh, for the honor of the Lord just to be a vessel of his honor and Hallelujah. of his power. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being Thank here today. Jesus. I'm Thank going to turn Jesus. it over to Thank Sherry. You, Jesus. I want to go back to compassion for just a moment. <clears throat> and then I'm going to open up the floor. I know some of you are, are ready to, to make your comments. Uh, but let me let me talk about compassion for just a moment. Compassion is from the heart of God. Sympathy is from the heart of man. But Jesus was moved with compassion and healed the multitude. It's the compassion that you have inside of you that's going to touch your family. It's going to go out and touch the neighborhood. It's going to touch your communities. It's going to touch the uh, the cities and the in this nation, uh, in other countries, in the name of Jesus. You know, and I'm going to I'm going to say this to you that changes are coming, changes are on the horizon uh, in our political arena, in our financial and economic arena. Changes are coming, and let me tell you something: if you want to be part of what God is doing, then you are to begin to pray. You're to begin to humble yourself. You're be begin to operate with compassion. Uh, in Jesus name. Did you know that the ordinary person out there, uh, they're, they don't have all of the equipment and all of the mighty weapons uh, that we have to get the work done. They're lacking in, in many areas. And, and so I'm saying to you tonight and encouraging you that if we want to see reformation in, in ourselves and in our families, in our workplace, uh, in the communities that we live in, and in the in the whole nation, our whole nation, uh, the United States, uh, there there are things that are on the horizon uh, for the uh, elections coming up in November. And what Brother Fred and I have been praying is that, and we've already started interceding uh, that that whoever God chooses, that's who will be our next leaders. Hallelujah. You saw what God did with Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House. One week he was he was not on the ballot and, a, and, a, and he was prophetically given a word that he was going to be the next Speaker of the House. And the very next week he was on the ballot and he got that position. God is moving. God is bringing reformation to all areas. Hallelujah. It is a, I, I see the Holy Spirit pushing like a mighty tsunami, like a mighty wave. It's coming. Uh, hallelujah. And we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared spiritually to receive what God says that Susan, this is what I want you to do. Jonathan, this is what I want you to do. Uh, 
uh, Jamie, this is what I want you to do. Hallelujah. We need to be prepared to for be a, to, to be a part to be a part of reformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, Brother Fred and I, um, we have increased our prayer time. It says as we humble ourselves under his mighty hand, we don't want to get so caught up in our thing, in our uh, our agenda, our schedule, and all about me, 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 me. No, uh, we want to do what God is telling us to do, and he's telling us to increase our prayer time, our intercession, hallelujah, so that this reformation that God wants to come will come. Praise God. I look at, at Haley, and Haley works in the schools. Hallelujah. Uh, in a very key strategic position. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, and, I, and I'm speaking to you, Haley, that you are in a strategic position to bring reformation to those children, to those uh, uh, family institutions that they represent. Uh, you have a key role in reformation uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you have something to say, unmute yourself and don't be shy. Let's let's hear from the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus. So Matt, Matthew's already unmuted. Uh, go <laughs> right ahead, Matthew. Hallelujah. First of all, y'all give me just a minute and what I'm about to say is for me more than anybody else. God is screaming at us right now. God is screaming at us, telling us to repent, number one. Number two, trust him. Number three, be thankful. God is about to, God is wanting to change our lives more than anything else. But we have to give in to him. We have to repent. And I know a lot of people say, well, this has happened and that has happened. God is saying, I've got that. Trust me. I've got it. Trust me. Trust me. Don't worry about it no more. Forgive, move on, and go on. God is changing. This message tonight is about changing your life to change the world. Amen. To change the world, the area Amen. around you, the area around you changes when you begin to change and trust God and to move in what he tells you to do. You want healing in your life? Trust him. You want a change in your life? Trust him. You want to you want people to change around you? Trust him. Do what he's called you to do, because God is moving right now. God, like she, they said. <laughs> God wants to do amazing things. And we're in a day and time where if we trust him and just do what he says to Jesus said, I only speak what the father tells me to speak. Amen. I only go where the father tells me to go. That's why he was able to live the life he lived. That's what we need to do is do what he tells us to do, period. Amen. <laughs> Everything, Excellent. nothing matters. The past doesn't matter anymore. The past is the past. We are in today. And today Amen. is the day of the Amen. Lord. And Amen. I shall rejoice in him. Amen. 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 God Amen. is moving. God Amen. is doing things in us. Hallelujah. This um, this message has got, I, I don't know if y'all, I've been rocking the whole time. This, been talking. <laughs> I just know that God is moving. Yes. The past doesn't matter anymore. Come on, let it go. Move on. Because what he wants to do today. See, today, so many people say, well, Jesus doesn't do, do doesn't do miracles anymore. Jesus doesn't heal anymore. Jesus doesn't change. He still does. <laughs> the Bible says he's the same today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed, then he heals now. Amen. If they spoke in tongues, then they speak in tongues now. Amen. If he Amen. delivers, then he delivers now. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it, anything and everything. You say, well, God doesn't have God's moving now. Yes. Hallelujah. God is changing things now. <laughs> we have to live in the God now. Amen. That's good. That's good. Repent. Humble yourselves. Repent. Change. 
That's where re revival starts with repentance. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I haven't done nothing. Repent. <laughs> Repent. God, oh my God, God is about to do some amazing things if we just believe and trust him and say, Amen. okay, God, I repent. I'm turning away from those things that are not of you that I that I have that I've held on to thinking, well, I've got the right to hold on to this. Well, I've got, I can hold on to this because because you understand, God. No, he wants you to change when the Holy Spirit, when the spirit of God comes on you, there is change. That's the truth. Amen. It begins with repentance. Amen. Amen. Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you. And we are in total agreement with that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I am looking at reformers right now. I'm looking at uh, 20, uh, close to 30 people uh, in this session tonight. And I am I'm looking at reformers Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Is we're in the upper room. Did y'all do y'all realize that tonight? That we're in the upper room. We're in the very presence of God tonight. Hallelujah. And he's imparting into us. Right now, the, the repentance is a gift. Receive the gift of repentance right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He's imparting power to us right now. What? The power to do his will. Yes. Not to, the power to do our own thing, but the power to do his will. Amen. That's what he's, he's imparting to us right now in the name of Jesus. He's imparting healing to those of you that need healing. Those of you that need healing in your, in your backs, the, in your, in your uh, uh, di digestive systems. Uh, God is, is healing right now. In the name of Jesus, he's imparting that healing. Praise the name of the Lord. God one, is one imparting. More, one more thing. Yeah. Quit saying I can't. Because <laughs> in God, you, in Christ, you can do all things. Amen. Amen. All things yeah. I can do through Christ. In all yes, things. Uh, Amen. That's the truth. You, you, you're talking about I, I, you're talking about healing right now. There's a lot of people right now that are not, they're not getting healed because they're saying I can't. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I can't. Kenneth Hagin, when he was sick on his deathbed, he got up. And he said, if I'm going to believe God, I'm going to move. And he took only a couple of steps at a time until he finally was moving around. Amen. I can through Christ. Amen. Amen. We certainly believe can. Believe in the healing and move as he says move in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, speak to us, Wayne. Oh. Huh? I believe with all my heart right now that the message to the church is to repent. Amen. Uh, just this last Wednesday night, the Holy Spirit called our entire church to repentance. Amen. And, and from one side of the church to the other, we had people weeping and crying out to God and repenting and seeking God for more. Today, we got to baptize 10 people. Oh, Praise hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And, uh, hallelujah. Back of one and five says, the Lord replied and said, look around at the nations. Look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day. Amen. And something that you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to see some things that if somebody <laughs> told you it was going to happen, you wouldn't believe it. God's what going to do some supernatural stuff that's going to shake you up. And he's Amen. going to wake you up. And he's going to move in you in a way that you never, ever believed that he could do. Like Matthew said, just say, yes, Lord, I can. I Amen. can do whatever you call me to yes, do. Lord, yeah. And I won't back up. Amen. Amen. I, Amen. I have, Amen. I have realized in the last few months that the enemy has attacked my finances. He has attacked my health. He has attacked my family. He has attacked my church. Everything about me, the, the enemy has attacked. And I have found out through the Holy Spirit, if it's a war he wants, it's a war he's got. Praise Hallelujah. God. The Holy Spirit is rising up or raising up holy warriors in the kingdom of God that won't Amen. back down. 
that won't say no and won't say I can't, but they will rise up in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, that's what I will do through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.